Well, it's great to be there, even uh, via Skype only. I was sorry not to be able to come, but it, but for me it's actually getting more and more difficult to do these kind of travels, and uh, Puerto Rico is not so e easy to reach. Now, what you see on the first picture is simply a, 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 a telescope which stands on the Canary Island of Tenerife, which we use for some of our long distance uh, communication experiments. Next picture, please. Now, uh, this is a, a geographic setting. We are basically just across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, this is just uh, for the fun and uh, particularly for the chairman. That's an entanglement swapping experiment we recently did between the Canary Islands. Okay, this uh, picture just shows you the development of our field. The einstein bodolsky rosen paper came out in 1935. And you see in the beginning we had very few citations. And then in uh, it started in uh, the 70s following Bell theorem. And then we had the explosion of quantum information. Uh, actually, maybe I should give my definition of information in a second. Uh, these two, the next three transparencies, these are just about uh, the hope of wetting the appetite or, or getting, uh, getting uh, theories among you interested in higher dimensional Hilbert spaces. Uh, what is possible with so called orbital angular momentum states is to explore the Hilbert space with high precision and in rather high dimensions. The individual states, as shown on that picture, have an orbital angular momentum. And then, relative to the propagation axis, there are screws, uh, the wave fronts are screws, and the orbital angular momentum can be any magnitude, any, multi any multiple of h bar. So a single photon can carry basically any angular momentum you want. So we use this recently in two experiments, which show you the potential. One is, that's the next picture, picture high over m entanglement. It's just the results of that experiment. I don't want to go into the internet. We were able to realize the state which is shown in the middle of the picture. It's a superposition, it's an entanglement between two photons. One photon carrying either plus 300 and or minus 300 h bar units of angular momentum, and the other one just the opposite. So uh, there's no limit. Uh, 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 I'm sure we can go to much higher numbers if that is of interest. The reason I say this is because uh, with fundamental experiments we only have explored really very very low uh, dimensions, like Bell's theorem lives in four dimensions, or what she has said lives in, in, in uh, three particles and uh, two dimensions each, uh, two dimensions each with eight dimensions, and so on. The next picture, multi-mode entanglement, uh, shows you that these states can be can have much higher, much more complexity to the upper right to see these rings. These are actual pictures of the states, which show uh, uh, each of them has some uh, angular momentum, but they show an internal structure, and these states are also normal. So, so you can, if you realize these, you can even go to much higher paper spaces, and we did this uh, in demonstrating uh, uh, basically the two such states are uh, entangled in the 103 times 103 dimensional input space, uh, uh, which is uh, really, really, I mean, uh, uh, it's really huge. And I, again, I'm saying this because I want uh, theorists to think about possibilities here. Now, the next picture, the late choice teleportation of an entangled state, entanglement swapping, is, uh, shows an experiment which was proposed by Asha Perez. Uh, in 2001. Uh, and it's actually uh, a, a funny idea. Paris proposed that you have two entangled uh, sources showing to the, uh, at the lower uh, end of the picture. And you, you, uh, you take each of the uh, one, one photo, let's talk about photos, but that doesn't matter, from each of the sources separately. And then you let the, another two propagate and you decide at the later time whether you observe uh, an entanglement, whether you project them onto an entangled state or not. And then 
if you project them onto a daily state, the two outer photons there are, but the, if not, then the two outer photons are not in tennis, but they are the remaining tennis with their respective uh, pair. Uh, the next picture, delayed choice in tennis when swapping shows you the experimental result. I don't want to go into details. But the point is that if you see entanglement between the outermost photons, you, you, you uh, have correlations in all three mutually unbiased spaces, uh, uh, shown in these bars on the right hand side. If not, the far right the correlation only in one case. Why is this interesting? Why is it, I think, important conceptually? Uh, the point is that these events, these results of the first two photons, I registered at some earlier time, independent of what you decide to put at a later time. Uh, and these events, these facts, don't care about all interpretations of the thing, whether uh, they indicate the thing when it's photo two or this photo number four. So in my in my feeling, such experiments uh, indicate that it's the more fundamental uh, than quantum states. I feel this is very, this is quite important. The next picture, which is uh, Wigner, American Journal of Physics, 1963. This is uh, a quote where I found the word information actually used. I read it, the state vector is only a short expression of that part of our information, of our information concerning the past of the system, which is a relative map for predicting as far as possible the future behavior there. Uh, I would go even uh, further and say uh, that it connects knowledge, the concrete it connects knowledge, but it represents information about the classical apparatus with possible future knowledge, namely this possible future features of classic apparatus. And there's no need to talk about quantum information. It's classical information which allows us to make predictions about possible future classic structures. The next uh, two the next picture, just keep through the receiver pictures, show you how classical apparatus really can be. Believe me, it's massive, it stands really there, and it's not something flimsy and so the next uh, transparency, randomness of measurement, points something out which is close to my heart. Uh, when you look at the, at the, the visual measurement procedure, uh, then we observe, uh, this is part of the famous measurement problem, or I don't call it a problem, but the measurement event or whatever, that, they, that, we, that the result is random. Uh, to me, and this is important now, to me, the randomness of the individual quantum event is our strongest evidence for the existence of an outside world. Because uh, uh, it cannot be described on the basis, the individual child cannot be described on the basis of what we know, on the basis of information we have. Rather, new information comes in, and that can only come in from so to speak, the outside. What is actually interesting about the measurement problem is not so much the realization of a specific result, but it is more the fact that if we obtain one result, we have to erase information about earlier problems. But this that is something which is not contained in classical measurement. Now, uh, that next feature of then is our ability to compose the world. The, and, of the state independence of the outside world, and our ability as a commentator is only limited to the choice of apparatus. Uh, there is the freedom of, of the experimentalist uh, to define which measurement apparatus to use and then thus to determine which quality can come in, like for example, position of momentum or part or interference pattern. It's your choice of apparatus which defines the core. But there is a second freedom uh, of nature to keep us the answer. Now, uh, just two small points, I will finish very soon. Uh, we recently had a nice workshop with Frankfurt in Austria, and there was one of the questions we asked was what new findings develop and the impulses are at the heart of your hopes for the future. For me, it's a new focus of experiments, and my hope is that none of these experiments will show any deviation from present conflict. No matter how large.
then the quantum fluid introduced of quantum mechanics had to be taken seriously and had to be taken by everyone. The next picture, I hope for the future is that we find and the fundamental, the fundamental sequence principle fund, which in follows that the quantum mechanics is a necessity that governs the world, not just some funny, <laughs> funny, uh, strange picture. Next picture, quantum fluidic. Uh, what is the, to me, the most important question is the relation of information and reality. And I would suggest, as we have learned physics, uh, in modern physics, that we should only have concepts which can be operationally valid. And I suggest that it is possible to operationally verify any information. So we have to somehow basic that maybe it would at two sides of the same point. Yeah. Information again, if you look at the, the quantum state, is the possibility of making a distinction. <coughs> now, the next picture with the car, car I just conclude, conclude now with some maybe funny remarks. The car, uh, the famous Picard ball, is pink I am. The, uh, the older quote by Augustinus, next picture says, I doubt, therefore, I am. And finally, the last picture. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I would completely understand that. And then with the last picture, I would like to thank you all very much.